How's it going everyone? My name is IFBB Pro Matt Grego and today is a very special video to me, like a very, very special video. So what today's video is going to entail is I'm going to tell you about my story, special moments in my life that led to where we are now. A lot went into the video to see me crying with my family and everything when I got my pro card. I want to let you all come in to my perspective on things and what happened and how we got to here because that's very important. I never really share too many things. I have a very tight circle, but I want to do more and more to kind of let you in on my life and things that help me evolve as a human and become the person you guys see in this channel. So with that being said, it all started when I was a wee little tadpole in 1994 when I was born. Just kidding, we're not going to go away from there, but so when it comes to the fitness industry, getting into competing even, I started lifting in 2009, that's when I got started. Um, I had a buddy get me into it. It wasn't anything serious, but I definitely enjoyed it. I noticed my body responded very well to resistance training. So I was like, I'm gonna keep doing this. So I did that on and off from about 2009, 2012. And then 2013 came, um, and that's when things really kind of like catapulted forward. So in 2013, I moved away. I went to Orlando, Florida. I went to an entertainment school and I started taking fitness a lot more serious. I got my first gym membership because leading up to then, I never had a gym membership. I was always training in my basement, which I'm right now. That's kind of when I wanted to film the video in the basement because this is where it all started um, down here, lifting uh, barbells and stuff and uh, doing the flat bench and almost dying because I had no spotter, but it's all great memories at the end of the day. But 2013, I got my first gym membership. So that was really exciting. My body really, really responded well to that. But we were doing our thing in Florida. I was in school, but Sometimes in life, you know, things don't work out and school in Florida did not work out for me. I decided to drop out of college. Um, I was a film student. It just, it wasn't for me. I, I more so wanted to be a personality in front of the camera, not necessarily filming movies and everything. That's what my goal was. I wanted to be into post-production for movies, but it just didn't work out. But one thing that that whole lifestyle in Florida taught me was that I loved, I had a burning passion for fitness and I had a burning passion to get better. I even had a burning passion to help other people get better because I did help a couple of friends down there, you know, improve their fitness. They helped, uh, helped them lose weight, helped them just get more confidence. So that was a lot of fun to me. Obviously, you know, from an outside perspective, you could see that whole experience as a failure. Um, and I could see how someone would, would see that. But to me, that was very, very important to my growth as a human, to my growth as who I am today. All those moments really kind of changed my life and they are very important to how I got to this point where I'm talking right now so 2013 to 14 I was in college for film dropped out found my passion for fitness and then things just started to pick up during that time and even before that I never really had a strong strong circle of people who were just really not supportive but I didn't have the right influence in uh, the people I was around so what I did was I just cut off a ton of people from 2013 to to 15 and really focus on my development, getting better as a person and growing and figuring out what I needed to do in life to just be happy. Because I think a lot of people do things for the wrong reasons. They don't do it for pure happiness, but my goal was to try to find my happiness and what I want to do in life that's going to make really the most sense for me. Because I don't want to be the person going to a job they don't enjoy or doing something that they don't love. So in that time, cut off a lot of people. I started to work out with a couple friends and in 2015, we really, really started hitting it hard, this hardcore gym. And I will say this, that my best gains ever came from that hardcore gym during that, during that time period, not now obviously, but during that time period, that hardcore gym training, I looked forward to it so much. I really, those are some special memories where we were just pushing weight, um, getting intense, yelling, grunting, but I really enjoyed those times with those couple of friends we were working out together. I knew at that point that I was gonna compete. Before that, at the gyms in Florida, I had people who were telling me like, you have a lot of potential, but I never really saw it. Like I never really saw that I had a look to compete. I just thought, I was like, okay, you know? But in 2015, I'm like, wow, like, I'm really shaping up. Like I could definitely do a show. But in 2015, I really wasn't doing too much with myself, to be honest with you. I was definitely training, going hard and getting better, but I wasn't really making steps forward in other avenues. So I did go back to school for business. I was continuing to train really hard. Diet was getting better and better, and I was focusing on getting ready to get to the stage. During 2015, towards the back end, I met a guy, a bodybuilder, and I was like, this bodybuilder is always training by himself. I'm like, I'm gonna approach him and see if he wants to train. So I asked him, his name was Lewis, and he said yes. I'm like, oh, let's go, I'm gonna learn a lot. Little did I know that this guy would literally teach me so much, help push me forward in so many different aspects, and just be a really good mentor to me to get to my first show. 
I hired a coach. Things were going good. Everything was progressing. And then we were in 2016. And before you know it, we were going for the first show. Like we were in prep. So during that, I documented everything. It's on my YouTube channel. You can see it's called The Prep. That was my first show. And we prepped so long. It was like 20 weeks or 24 weeks, something like that. But it all paid off because we won. So I won my first show overall. I was on a cloud nine. I had a little bit of ego. I thought it was way better than it actually was. But um, it, it was a really cool experience. Like it's not many people do the first show and win. So it was definitely a big, big moment in my life. It was, it was exciting to win. And I love that feeling. I love competing. One thing I left out was that before this, I was a competitive video game player. I played Halo and I was very, very good. I was like a high amateur level player. Um, I never got to pro. But always in competitive aspects from sports when I was younger. I would be so hard on myself and I would get pissed at my teammates if they weren't doing certain things. So that's why I kind of found that team sports weren't for me in terms of like, you know, basketball and everything because when I got to high school, I just would get mad um, if my teammates weren't doing the right moves and the right calls and everything. So that's why I stopped doing that. But yeah, won the show, it was on cloud nine. And now from here, I was like, okay, what's next? So my buddy Lewis, like junior essays. So that's what our target was. We had a full on off season. I got fat as shit. It was not a good idea. I got really over, not, see, I was always very lean growing up. Like I never really put on too much body fat, but I'll tell you why I put on a lot of body fat during that off season. It was not good because it really hurt me come show day. So did the off season, didn't really have, the best direction at that point. Um, I still had Lewis in my corner, which is a blessing, you know, a very big blessing, but didn't have much direction. So essentially I got ready to junior USA's. Um, there was a show in Charleston and I didn't really have a coach to do my own thing. Kind of had a coach and decided, I don't know, it was weird, um, but I got a coach and prep for the show. And if you followed my journey, um, it didn't go, it didn't go according to plan. And that was honestly one of the most devastating, upsetting, punch to the gut moments of my life. Um, during that prep, I lost family members who passed away. Um, I didn't have good guidance. I didn't have the right people in my corner. It was just really not a recipe for success. And I got dead last at my first national show. I went from winning an overall to getting dead last. And that's a really tough pill to swallow. I remember after the show, I stayed down there by myself just by myself and I was walking on the beach and just like meditating things and it was just such a it was not a good part of my life and it was really sad I was really down for a while um, it took me a lot to get back on my feet and then I did a show after that one that was the MPC South Jersey um, I got first and juniors and fifth and open but that was still like it just wasn't wasn't what I wanted uh, it was that was kind of upsetting too you know because we compete to win and we compete to be our best and i definitely wasn't my best either of those times by far like not my best even close and yeah my guidance was horrible and not what i needed to but at the end of the day it's all on me obviously my energy wasn't positive back then and i attracted negative energy and what happened negative results so that was very very uh, tough pill to swallow essentially so that was a really rough experience for me, but what it did was ignite this fire inside of me, this burning passion to be better and to never let that happen again because I knew that feeling and it was the worst feeling I've ever experienced. I never wanted to feel it again. So what I did was I started training people, um, got, became a personal trainer. I always had a certification, but I never actually started training people. I trained people on the side. I actually started training people, started growing my uh, personal training clients. I started doing online coaching, started growing that. So things were starting to look positive. I was in school, I was still doing my business major. So things were going in the right direction. Even though the show didn't go well, that taught me so much and other things were growing. So that was good. And we fast forward to 2018. So this is where life really starts to change. So in 2018, I had the best off season I probably ever had before that. 2017, I was training my buddy Adrian, who's another person in this uh, video you're gonna find out was a very influential person for me. And we were training and we were growing. We were eating, I was eating seven meals a day. That off season was, it, the off season was just like a dream come true, honestly, for me in terms of growth because I grew so much. I went from benching like 225 in incline to 315. So it was like, it was insane. I never had a structured growing phase. So that was like my first one. But the off season went well, had some new friends I was working out with and we transferred over to 2018. So what we did in 2018 was 
we got ready for NPC Atlantic State. So that's a pretty big show ran by Bev Francis. I, that was like my redemption. And my goal is to do the universe afterwards. We're going to get to that. Atlantic State's a redemption. I'm coming back. I'm going to show you what I've been working for. This is a moment I've been working for. I'm busting my ass. This offseason was crazy. I'm going to prep my ass off. So what I do, I got a new coach, Omar Ventura. Very well-known coach. And things just started clicking. I was training, going harder, dieting harder. It was another long prep. Long prep seemed to work well for me. I did about 18 to 20-week prep with him. And during that time, I met another influential person, Eddie. Like I said, this year was very, very monumental for me. I met some very important people. And things just really unfolded for my eyes. Because before this, I was always a lone wolf. And I chose to be a lone wolf. But one thing I always knew in the back of my head was that as long as I'm focused on my goals, I'm being a good person, I'm being positive that good things will come my way. And that's exactly what happened in 2018. So I did Atlantic States. So I did Atlantic States. I got second. Now, obviously we come to win. But there was one, there was 23 guys in my class. Two, that was a really big show. And three, I just got done getting dead last at my national show previously. So this show was a big win to me. I had a lot of my close friends there with me. It was just a really special memory. I remember just transforming the night before in front of my eyes. Like it was insane to see how much my body changed. And that really fueled my fire to want to become the next level, like get to the next level, get to this, but that's all coming up soon. So during that prep, I became closer and closer to a very special woman. That's my goose. That's the person you see film my videos, but I became closer with her, and then after Lank States, we started to make a very strong connection. We always had a strong connection, but it really developed into a very, very strong connection. And like I told you guys, as long as I'm focused on my goals, I'm focused on being positive, being a good person, helping others, I knew good things were coming my way. And that's exactly what happened. So in 2018, after Lank States, I started dating my goose. If there's one thing I can tell you all is that if you have the right woman in your corner, that the great things in life can come. People are out here trying to go to clubs and do all this, but you got to realize that that one special woman will take you to the highest mountaintop and true happiness will come. So we started dating. My life really started to change and I started to become my true self. I never, never was my true self until we started dating and I'm so grateful for that and her. I really don't know where I'd be if it wasn't for all those experiences and her coming to my life. So I'm very blessed in that department too. A lot of blessings in my life in 2018. And just so we clarify things that we both took a risk being together. It wasn't like, you know, smooth sailing. It was, it was choppy waters, but a lot of people thought we wouldn't be together, but here we are two and a half years later, still together, happy as ever and only getting happier every day. And we have so many big things that are happening in our life right now. And the next video, you're going to see what's really happening in our life. It's, it makes me emotional to think about, but I'm just so thankful for her and the life I have. But yep, we started dating in 2018 and then just living life. I wasn't thinking about competing. And so what I do, I was gonna do the universe, but you know, the universe, not the actual universe was telling me that I need to enjoy life and spend time with her. I canceled my universe prep. I had four weeks left, told Omar that, you know, life stuff happened. And I was like, hey, I'm gonna do Miami. But I was hit and do Miami that year. So as 2018 progressed, we were doing things. We were going to the beach. We were eating out all the time. I had thousands of credit card bills. <laughs> It was pretty, it was pretty terrifying to get that credit card bill, but we were traveling, went to Pittsburgh, went to Jersey, we went all over the place. Had a, we we were living life, you know, we were like little kids, just having the best time. So as we're living life and enjoying things and feeling like we're on cloud nine, so a serious, serious health scare came into my life, and this was a true testament to me. This was a true experience that. I'll tell you what, it, it molded me into a different person. 2018, around like November, October, I ate a fever and it just wasn't going away. And I was feeling very weak and something wasn't right. So I went to a walking clinic and they were like, oh, it's, uh, it's a viral infection, you know, it should be good. But I kept getting worse and I went to a patient first and there was this woman who just didn't speak English very well and she got my blood work and everything. She goes, hospital now. I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, you need to go to the hospital right now. You bleed out and die. I'm like, what are you talking about? So she's saying I have this rare blood condition. I don't even know how to say it. Thrombo, thrombo, say, I'm gonna look it up. Thrombocytopenia, low platelet levels. So 
essentially they were saying I was gonna bleed out and die if I got cut. That's what they were telling me. Um, I was put in the hospital. I was on quarantine. This is in 2000, 2018, mind you. I was put on quarantine. I had an infectious disease doctor. I had a cancer doctor. I had every doctor in the world you can imagine because they didn't know what was wrong with me. My blood levels were so wacky. It was terrifying. They were walking in saying, we think you might have leukemia. We saw a cell. And this is me in the hospital. Like I was on cloud nine and now I'm like thinking I might not be able to go to the gym ever again. I might have leukemia because they told me that like with this condition, you can't go to work out anymore because if anything happens, you just bleed out and die. I just remember looking outside. I was crying because I didn't, I didn't know what was happening. I, I didn't know what my next steps in life were going to be. I thought I was, I might die. So we spent three days there. Things got a little bit better. They let me go. And then we waited two weeks to get the results. And it turned out I had strep throat B. I was in this hospital thinking I was going to die. I They told me I had leukemia potentially. They saw cells. I had an infectious disease doctor. They thought I was... I had some rare virus that no one ever knew about in the United States, so they put me on complete lockdown. They had, you know, quarantine masks and everything. The whole, like, biohazard suits when, they, suits when they came into the hospital room, it was crazy. But what that experience did was it fueled this rage in me to never, ever have that feeling of being, like, lost. I wanted to know exactly what I was going to do at all moments, and I knew the universe was going to guide me in whatever direction it had me, because I knew that I got through that moment I wasn't going to get through anything. And I knew that my, I, what that really taught me was that life is short and anything can happen. And you really need to cherish your moments you have now and be blessed for every single day you have. What did I do at the hospital? Went to the gym, did legs, because guess what? Life's too short. You never know what's going to happen. But as 2018 came to a close, did a lot of soul searching. I actually got a pretty cool digital marketing gig. So that was exciting. I was definitely overwhelmed at first because I was never used to like that type of work environment and I was going to start in 2019 but I got uh, accepted in 2018 so I knew 2019 was going to be a pretty big year for me so 2019 started and I started the most insane schedule of my life insane so I was working three jobs I was doing my online coaching I was doing personal training and I was doing my digital marketing on top of that I was still a student I was finishing my business degree I was doing an online class about to go to class for one class. It was a immersive business class where you ran a virtual business. Like you had like, we were a team and we ran a business and I was the marketing manager, obviously. But that, I did four months of that schedule. I got sick every single month. I was sick every single month because I just was run down all the time. But I'll tell you what, that period really helped me focus and show me how much I can push in the work ethic I do possess. So I was doing all the jobs, I was killing it. I was doing school, I was killing it. And then the semester came to a close and I found out that I won a prestigious award for business. It was called the Just Born Business Award. Give it to one student with the highest GPA who shows leadership in their team. And that's exactly what I did. So I got the award, got some money. Uh, it was really cool, I got my family there, had the experience of getting a business award. So. That was pretty awesome to me. I went to school for one class and I got an award. So, that, I mean, that, I get, yeah, pretty good. But, yeah, three jobs, school, just was too much. So, another thing I kind of left out is that during that period, I was telling the two influential people, Adrian and Eddie, and obviously my goose, that I was done. I was hanging up, never competing again. I was going to focus on business. Um, I was going to be all included in business. That's what I wanted to do. I want to be a businessman, run businesses, you know, do that whole aspect of life. And they, I'll never forget it. We were doing legs, but leg extensions. And they all just looked at me like, they're like, what the hell's wrong with you? What do you mean you're not gonna compete? This is what you're destined for. And I'll tell you what, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. But without that moment, I don't know where I'd be right now because that really set me up for the future. So I listened to them and I did NPC Universe. That was my next show. I hit Omar. So I decided NPC Universe gonna be the next show. I hit up Omar and we get the ball moving. Um, but one thing you guys need to realize is I lost a ton of size. I wasn't in a good place to prep in terms of like my actual body, but my circle was very strong. It was very pure. It wasn't like any other year where I had toxic people or negative energy. I had very positive people in my corner. It was a blessing. So I did universe and I got fifth. And I remember going off that stage crying, just like I was bawling my eyes out because I'm like, I went from all this, like I had no, I lost all the size and I came in and I got fifth at this show. 
Like, imagine if I actually prepped and had that off-season and did all this. I could have... I might have been able to win my pro card. So it was like a very emotional experience. I had all my friends with me. And then from that point, I'm like, all right, we're doing nationals. We're doing Miami. We're going to MPC nationals. So I'm, I'm, I, we went on vacation, my goose. I really couldn't, you know, it wasn't the best way to go on vacation, but I made sure that we enjoyed the trip and everything. Um, I wasn't really as structured as I needed to be in that time frame. It could have been a lot better, but, you know, can't go back in life. So 2019 nationals prep starts. And I'm feeling really good. Like, I'm, I'm feeling really, really, really good. I feel like I can actually do this. Like, I get my pro card, finally achieved his dream. Got some good size now. Um, things are going well in the prep. I'm getting tighter and tighter. And then my mind, my mind just kind of like, two, three weeks out, just, it, it just didn't, I didn't trust myself. And that was my biggest error. I wasn't around my, my tight circle as much. And I got to say that was really stupid of me. And everything happens for a reason, but at two to three weeks out, we kind of had a feeling something wasn't right just by how my mind was responding. Even on show day, my mind wasn't the normal Matt. You know, Matt's usually really happy on show day. I wasn't that happy. So I did MPC Nationals in Miami and I got fifth. And that was, you know, I, the, the blood condition, junior essays, those were all really bad experience, but that might've been the worst. And you say, Matt, what do you mean? that You got fifth at National, it's a huge accomplishment. But let me tell you, it wasn't about the placing. It was about letting my close people to me down. And I just remember looking to the Miami skyline while I'm sitting in that chair. I remember just feeling like complete shit because I let my close people to me down. And that was such a terrible feeling. It's different when you feel like you let some people down. And I felt like that. And I just couldn't... I, it was hard with me to look myself in the mirror because I knew these people loved me and supported me. I knew they, they loved me and supported me no matter what, but I really wanted to have this moment with them. And it just didn't happen. And I felt so down because I, I the main thing was I just let them down. Like I said, most people get fifth at nationals. They're ecstatic. You know, they're so happy. But to me, that was just like, I, I was gutted. I was completely gutted. So obviously you can't live in that, that negative feeling for too long. You got to use that as fuel to get better. And that's why I did. I was still doing PT. I was still doing online coaching. We're still doing some school, I backed off a little bit, and we're still doing my digital marketing. And that carried in 2020 when I was still doing all of that. But one thing I did at the end of 2019, usually on New Year's, we drink, we get messed up. That's just what we did. That's what I've done all my life. But in 2019 and 2020 New Year, I drank zero alcohol. I did nothing. I legit sat at home with my girl. With my girl. We just relaxed and it was really nice. And I felt like this year is gonna be so clean, like so pure. Like so focused, I knew exactly what was gonna happen because we started the year off perfect. Not intoxicated, nothing. So 2020 starts, we're growing, we're getting huge. Probably a little bit too much body fat, but I'm I'm not gonna do that anymore. But yeah, I'm just doing, I'm you know, living life. You know, Goose are having some fun times. Me and Adrian are hanging out more again. Me and Eddie are getting closer again. It was really nice because those are my people. It's my team. And we you know we're getting ready. I got all these guys doing shows now. I had five people doing this NPC Lehigh Valley show. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. My coaching is developing. And then, you know, pandemic comes and gyms close down. Um, the shows cancel. And just like that, a lot of things are just stripped away. And I'm like, wow, this is, this is rough. So during that time I lived in my basement, it was really depressing. My, I think... My girl had a harder time than me, but it was just really depressing lifting in the basement. We were kind of just laying in bed all day. We didn't really have motivation to do anything. I was still doing digital marketing, coaching my athletes and everything, but it was just not the same. Like, we were just really down because we were lifting this basement. Like, it just wasn't, this is not what we, really the optimal scenario. Obviously, we had weights, so we're blessed. You know, we were definitely blessed because we had weights, but we were just getting depressed, to be honest with you. Kind of hit us hard. And she was going to start her new job, but she didn't because they waited because of the pandemic. All low moments lead to highs. So I always tell people the lows lead to the highs. Thankfully, and I always say the right people come in your life at the right time. My two buddies said, hey, you want to come to our garage gym? I'm like, of course I want to come to your, your garage gym. I've just been working out in the basement. It's terrible. So we started working out at the garage gym and actually became very close with them and their family and formed some truly special memories. I actually have the videos on my channel if you want to see them when I was working on the the green wool garage gym but it was a lot of fun times I was getting bigger I was getting my muscle back I lost during working on the basement all around it was a really good time um, I got my man Adrian start training with me there so 
we were killing it. We were listening to rap and heavy metal on the speakers. It was just a lot of fun. So things started to open back up in Pennsylvania. That's where I live. And I started getting back into the groove of different things. So I started training people again. I started going to the gym gym. Not just the garage gym anymore. I started going to the gym gym. A new gym opened my area. But probably the biggest thing I did and 2020 was a year of risks for me because I said I'm going to go all in on what I love because I had a lot of people in my corner telling me to. I decided that digital marketing and the whole being an employee life just was not for me. You know, it's for some people, but it wasn't for me and I started to hate it. So I decided that I was going to step away and I told them that I was going to get my two weeks. Um, it was very hard for me to do that because I've been making good money uh, up until that point, like pretty good money for my age. And it was just, it was a big risk because I went from, I just pretty much lost a, a decent amount of income. Um, it wasn't like, it, I had, I was making money in different ways, but that was a pretty nice um, steady income. So that was pretty rough for me. But I kept telling myself, I was like, these risks are going to pay off. It may not be right now. It may not be a month. It may take the rest of the year, but they're going to pay off. So after quitting there, I was still doing personal training, but I started backing off on that slowly and slowly and slowly because like I said, I wanted to be more immersed in my goals and my passion because I knew that if I was just all in on something that it was gonna work. That's just the type of person I am. So I start preparation for MPC Universe, the one that got postponed. I was feeling really, really good about this prep, but another blessing that happened during that beginning of the prep is that I was gonna get my man Adrian ready for a show because what I left out, what I left out was that there was a special moment after we went on, you know, after lockdowns and everything where him, his girlfriend, myself and my girlfriend, we all went to this like underpass, like at night, it was like 11 midnight. And we were just talking about life and the universe was speaking to us. And it was telling us exactly what we needed to do. And that was the moment that we really listened to the universe and the, and what destiny told us to do. So at that moment, I told Adrian, you got ready for the show. So we get, we're like, we're gonna get Adrian for the show. So I started prepping him for his first show. Mind you, before that, he was working out with a wooden bench. So we had to start from ground zero and work our way up. And this is while I'm prepping for my, you know, universe, the, brought the biggest show of my life. So we get him on stage. He wins two classes, he gets second. He completely changes his look. And that was so motivating to me. It, it, I saw the way he was acting and carrying himself. And just because I'm like the veteran compared to him doesn't mean shit. I was so motivated by the way he handled himself that I was like, I need to step my game up. And I became a different person the rest of that prep, a different person. I was a different person from the start, but for the rest of that six, seven weeks, eight weeks of what I think, I was a different person. There was no talking in the gym. Um, unless you were like my tight circle, I wasn't really talking to anybody. I was just so focused. I was visualizing every rep, every set, everything I did was going towards being all in on my passions. and. That mentality honestly is what led to these special moments coming up because I was just so driven and focused to make my dreams a reality, not just for me, but for my woman, for my friends, because I know if I succeed, they're coming with, you know, it's not just me winning and then, oh, yeah, 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 Matt won. It's if I find success and happiness, they find success and happiness. So I made it my mission to become the best me because I knew I'd bring them up with me. So we're at six weeks out. The prep's going amazing. I'm ahead of schedule. And this this prep was really challenging me because I was so I was in good shape early. So it was like I was having mental struggles. I was having doubt. I was going to buy a new car, a $70,000 car. I just wasn't thinking well. It was just... But that happens sometimes when you're really shredded and you're in the heart of prep. And then I had to talk to my coach. And I'll never forget these words. He said... We had a couple... We shared words and everything. But he said, happiness is success. And I read that and it really spoke to me so much. And then for the rest of the prep, I was just so, I was just happy. I started to become more spiritual. I started to pray every morning. I started to say what I'm grateful for every morning. And I'd say what I'm grateful for every night before I went to bed. And the energy was just, it was, it was amazing. It was just such positive energy. It was infectious for the people around me too. They were getting better. It was just good all around. So we fast forward to a couple days out from the show. Things are looking amazing. I'm the best I've ever have been by a mile. It just, it feels good. I got my team coming to the show. Like I got all my close people with me, the people I need. They're with me, not anybody else. No fakeness, no toxicity, no negativity, just straight positivity. 
which is why he needed it, and that's why I got. So we get to this to show day. Um, I got my man Adrian, you know, help me with things. You know, I got Omar, my coach, tell me things. Got my goose there, help me with things. And I just got a really positive team around me. And it's such a special memory to me because you can't replicate that. You can't trade that. There's nothing like when you have the right people in your corner, it's such a special feeling because you. Knew, I knew if I didn't even get my pro card that I was going to have those special people with me to celebrate no matter what. But I knew my mission was to get that pro card because, like I said, if I succeed, we're all going up together, and that, I just I couldn't let anyone down this time. Nationals was too much for me. I mean, I couldn't I couldn't have that feeling again. So we get to show day, we're at pre judging. I'm looking good. I'm getting better as I'm posing, and then we get to you know the judgment. We get to the point where we're on stage, and this is a funny part. I'm in pre judging. Um, you know, doing my comparisons, and everything. I'm in the first call outs, right? That's you know, in the first call outs, you're in top five, top six. And I'm there, and I'm posing. I didn't get moved at all. I'm like, ah, oh, you know, this, you know, I'm like, damn, I gotta do nationals. The reason I, I'm thinking that is because I look down, and I, if I was in the third spot, I'm like, oh, I got third, I gotta do nationals. Like, all right, whatever, you know. I told my buddy who's a head coach by Omar too. I'm like, yo, congrats, man, you got your pro card. He's like, Matt. He's like, are you dumb? I'm like, what are you talking about? We were splitting the center. I'm like, no way. So I like, I ran out, and I wasn't like happy because I was still so shocked because I didn't know like what went. I didn't know what happened. So they went out like you were split in the center. I'm like, oh my god. Like I, I walked and I was like, I was, I freaked out for a second. I was like, okay, we can go back to the hotel and rest. Um, talked to Omar on the phone. Uh, got a meal, started to rest, and just now the goal was to finish it out and see if we get this pro card because I, I if you're in the center, if you're splitting center, that means you're top two and top two means that you get pro cards. So you know anything could happen. So I. I'm in line, I'm posing, you know, I'm smiling, I'm talking to some competitors, we're having a good time. And then we go out there, do our poses, they say, you know, you guys are in the top five, they pull the top five of the back of stage, and like, you guys go hit your, your routine quick. So we hit our routine, and then we get in line, and I hear fifth, and I hear fourth. And then they take a long break here, and they say third place, and they say, I think it was 153. And I remember I just said, the, the picture of my Instagram, I remember I just looked to the sky and I was just giving thanks and just at a loss for words. Like the pictures, they speak a thousand words, but I just had, it didn't have any. And I hear, and you knew IP Pro and they announced me and I'm like, just every emotion's hitting me while I'm going to get my award because. So they call out second and I'm getting my award and I'm just like, so many emotions are flooding me because like this, this like the story you just listened to was all playing in my head while I was going through to get my award. I was thinking about Junior SAs and getting last and being in the hospital and telling me I couldn't lift again and nationals laying everyone down and all this building up and it's just so much emotion in me. I remember just walking with the metal, just staring at it backstage while I'm going to get my stuff and I then I come and I get my, my bag and everything ready to go and I see my family just start breaking down. You know, we were all crying. This is, cause there's so much that went into this. Like nobody, like I'm glad I'm making this video so everyone can understand what went into this. It wasn't just like, you know, like, oh yeah, we got a pro card. Like there was so much ups and downs that led to get to this moment. And it, we were crying, you know, it was so emotional. Like we all had such a major part in this and I couldn't have done it without any of them. So that's why they're emotional too, because they know, they all knew the role they played into it. It was just a very emotional moment. And then, you know, we got to go outside, take pictures of everyone and just enjoy the dream finally happening. And the next dream's coming too, but like, this was the dream that we were trying to chase, getting the pro card. So we spent the night together just enjoying food and, and laughs and conversation and having just a, a good time. And you know the way I am. I I don't like to say I'm a workaholic, but I'm celebrating. And then we get back and we're all talking and I get back on my computer doing client updates because that's just who I am. But it, it was just such a surreal moment achieving this, this moment of getting this pro card because I work so hard for this. You know, the people around me work so hard for this because it, it's not just me. They're with me too. Like they, they were a contributive factor to all this. So I'm just blessed to have them all in my life. You know, they all know who they are and just had that moment with them. And it's just so surreal. It's still not, it still hasn't set in that I'm a pro and I'm, I can, you know, now work towards getting to Olympia. Like that's so surreal to say, but it happened and it, it's really hard to explain the feelings I have for it. Um, after the show, it's Sunday, I'm sitting there getting our stuff packed up and I see men's physique pic, tag me in a picture. And this is a page I've been following for years. Like I've seen like Jared Buendia, Andre Ferguson, you know, Kayaki, all these people I look up to. 
and I see my picture there, and it's like, welcome to the, prof the IPB Professional League. I'm like, wow. Like, this is like a dream come true, all this coming on. And yeah, I got the pro card. You know, led to that special moment, and I'm just happy. I'm really happy I made this video for you all to understand what I went through to get this, because a lot of people just see the result. And they don't understand what went to get into that result. A lot of ups and downs, a lot of rough moments, a lot of tough times, a lot of questions, a lot of doubt. A lot of risks, a lot of risks for this year, but we got to this glorious moment. We got to the pro card. Now we're going to work towards getting to the Olympia. And I just want to say I'm so thankful and blessed and grateful for the people in my life. And I wouldn't trade this life for anything else. And I hope you all enjoyed this video because it was very special to me to make it. And with that being said, give it a like, comment, subscribe, share. This was a long one. And if you made this one, uh, comment the dream. If you made it to the end of this video, comment the dream. I thank you all so much for watching this one. I'm IFBB Pro Mac Rego, and I'm out of here.